Hello everyone, I am Rider of Dinosaurs. In 2020, we've seen a growth in the number of anti-vaxxers actively inciting others not to vaccinate. Now that a vaccine is getting distributed, I thought it would be a good idea to share a video I made last year about anti-vaxxers. So to my regular viewers, I apologize for the re-upload, but I thought the video could help people understand why the anti-vax movement is dangerous and nothing more than yet another conspiracy theory. I hope you enjoy it, learn and share. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. I am Rider of Dinosaurs. This will not be one of my regular comment videos. As you might have seen, I've put up a warning as I will be showing some disturbing images. If you are very sensitive to this, please do not watch this video. Today I'm going to talk about anti-vaxxers, people who feel that they know more than all of the pharmaceutical industry, their researchers and every doctor in the world. For this reason, I titled this video, Anti-vaxxers are getting away with murder. Sounds like a harsh title. It is. I plan to show how dangerous this idea is and the consequences it has already caused in our world. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines an anti-vaxxer as a person who opposes vaccination or laws that mandate vaccination. Andrew Wakefield is the doctor whose medical license was revoked in the UK following his fraudulent study in which he linked the MMR, measles, mumps and rubella vaccine to autism. He's essentially the father of the modern age anti-vaccine movement. What most people don't know is that Wakefield had major financial conflict of interests. While he was discrediting the combination MMR vaccine and suggesting parents should give their children single shots over a long period of time, he was conveniently filing patents for single disease vaccines. Also, unknown and I believe mostly unknown to anti-vaxxers, his paper is based on blood samples he drew at his kid's birthday party. Wakefield paid children at his son's 10th birthday party to donate their blood for his research. There's also something else. At the very bedrock of science is the concept of falsification. A scientist runs a test, gathers findings, tries to disprove himself by replicating his experiment in other contexts. Only then he can know if these findings are true or not. Wakefield has never done this. He refused to replicate the paper's findings. Among other reasons, you have Hollywood A-listers saying that vaccines are bad for you. And because they're famous, people tend to listen. But being famous, successful actors doesn't make them medically knowledgeable. Here we have just three examples of Hollywood's anti-vaxxers. Every time I think of anti-vaxxers, I remember a Dr. House episode that approaches the subject. The way he deals with it is brilliant. Let's have a look. Missing her vaccination dates. We're not vaccinating. Think they don't work? I think some multinational pharmaceutical company wants me to think they work. Pad their bottom line. Mm. This is a really good example of the mentality of anti-vaxxers. It's all a conspiracy and the pharmaceutical companies just want money. Let's see his answer. You know another really good business? Teeny tiny baby coffins. The antibodies in Yummy Mummy only protect the kid for six months, which is why these companies think they can gouge you. They think that you'll spend whatever they ask to keep your kid alive. Want to change things? Prove them wrong. A few hundred parents like you decide they'd rather let their kid die than cough up 40 bucks for a vaccination. Believe me, prices will drop really fast. 
it's a shocking and brutal way to approach the subject. But to get the message across, I don't think we can do it with kid gloves anymore. People need to realize the harm they are doing to their children and to other children when they suggest they go off vaccines. This is the section that requires your discretion. I felt it was important to show the effects of the diseases that are making a comeback, mainly measles and polio. There will be graphic images after this. If you are sensitive to these, please stop the video now. Measles is highly contagious. 90% of people who lack immunity and are close to a sick person will become sick themselves. This is why we need to vaccinate. The measles virus can live up to two hours in the air when an infected person coughed or sneezed. Other people can become infected by breathing the contaminated air or touching a contaminated surface and then touching their faces even though the sick person left the area more than an hour before. Doctors can prevent measles with vaccines, but there is no cure for it once someone is sickened. Polio mainly affects children under the age of five. Polio is highly contagious. An infected person can spread the virus to other people immediately before symptoms show up. Paralysis from polio virus can lead to death because the virus affects the muscles that helps us breathe. Now we've reached the part of the video where I explain why they are getting away with murder. A good example of this is this website, Vaxxed, that promotes and advertises everything which is anti-vax. Let's have a look at the website, the people behind it, and their qualifications. Polly Tomey, mother, founder of the Autism Trust Charity, co-author of a book about autism, produced over 60 videos for the European Sky Information Channel, no medical qualifications. Bella Tomey, daughter, manager of the junior board for the Autism Trust, created and founded by her mother, Polly, founder of a gluten-dairy-free sugar bakery, studies journalism, no medical qualifications. Anu Vaidya, audio-video productions engineer, filmmaker, photographer, no medical qualifications. Brian Burroughs, producer, editor, motion graphics and visual effects artist, Worked in Spy Kids 4 and Sin City 2. No medical qualification. Del Big Tree, Emmy Award winning producer, filmmaker, and investigative medical journalist. No medical qualifications. And last but not least, Andy Wakefield, also known as Andrew Wakefield, former academic gastroenterologist. He received his medical degree from the St. Mary's Hospital School, University of London. In May 2010, he was struck off the United Kingdom Medical Registry because he failed in his duties as a responsible consultant, act against the interests of his patients and for dishonesty and irresponsibility. In April 2011, received the Pegasus Award for refusal to face reality. In the same year, his paper describing the connection between autism and vaccines is described as the most damaging medical hoax 
of the last hundred years. Finally, in 2012, Times Magazine named him in a list for the great science frauds. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are the people behind a website that promotes quote-unquote scientific proof of vaccines causing autism and other illnesses. I know what you're going to say. We're nine minutes, almost ten, into the video and I've got no proof or didn't basically address the main topic, which is murder. How are the anti-vaxxers getting away with murder? The reason for that is that I felt that an introduction to the anti-vaxxers and where they get some of their information was in order. It just went a little longer than I expected. Let's use an example to better illustrate the point. Let us consider a community of a thousand children around the same age, out of which 50 can't be vaccinated for measles because they are allergic to the virus vaccine. You move into this community and your child is not vaccinated. And aware to you, your child has contracted measles, but is still not displaying the symptoms. All 51 children attend the same school. In the gym, your child sneezes. Within a two hour period, all of the other 50 children enter that gym. By the end of the week, 90% of them are now infected with the measles. Congratulations, your child just helped get 45 children contract a totally preventable disease. They are now at risk of suffering several effects, including death. Example number two, you have an unvaccinated child and there hasn't been any issues. You join an anti-vaccination group to spread the word. You convince 50 mothers not to vaccinate their children. Three months later, three of the 50 children contract measles and one of them dies. Congratulations, you are now a murderer. Let's have a quick look at recent events in 2019. Flu deaths by the numbers. Total flu deaths this season, 199. Total flu deaths last season, 391. Total percentage of people who died from the flu this season who didn't get the vaccine, 59%. Unfortunately, we don't know out of those 199, how many were children, how many were adults. And so we don't know where the decision to not vaccinate lied. What we know is that 59% of these people should not have died. That's 117 people that died from the flu because they didn't vaccinate. Someone was responsible for these people's decisions not to vaccinate. Either friends who are anti-vaxxers and advise them not to vaccinate, they decide for themselves because of things they've seen online. Either way, it's murder. Whoever put out the information that these people should not vaccinate should be accountable. They should be prosecuted. They should get jail time for it. Because every time you advise anyone to do something and they do it because you're a friend, they trust you, it's your responsibility. If they get hurt, it's on your head. If you don't know what you're talking about, here's an advice, shut up. Don't advise, or even better, ask them to consult with someone who actually knows what they're talking about. A professional, someone who actually studied the issue. Don't give your personal views. That person's life might be on your hands. Do you really want to risk it? Just to sound smart? Stop it. Well, that's all for now. I'm going to leave the video here. Uh, it's already reaching the 15 minute mark. And I don't want to make this any longer than it should be. This is my first video. I may revisit the subject if I do get a good reception of it. 
or maybe I'll just redo and make it a bit shorter. Uh, all depends on its um, its reception from from you guys. Oh, by the way, I've set up a Patreon uh, in case anyone wants to donate just a little bit to this unemployed person. I feel weird asking for this. Um, you don't have to, of course not. Uh, just your like and subscribe will help me tons. But if you are able and you do want to help me out with my productions and maybe increase the level of production just a little bit, it would be appreciated. The link will be in the description. Thank you.